the Kingdom of Kush. A rich and powerful empire, it stretched from Egypt's southern border several hundreds of miles into the Sudan. Its capital, Kerma, was the oldest and largest city in Africa outside Egypt. Today, Kerma is in ruins, but its massive temple is still largely intact. 3,500 feet square, it's known locally as the Defufa. Though stripped of its outer casing and gnarled by time, the Defufa still dominates the surrounding landscape. In 1977, Charles Bonnet, director of the Swiss archaeological mission in the Sudan, began exploring the Defufa as part of a plan to investigate Kerma. To the side, a single gateway opens onto a stairway leading to a small chamber, the temple's inner sanctum. Near an altar made of white marble, Bonnet found the bones of sheep and goats, suggesting it was used for the sacrifice of animals. We are here in the middle of an enigmatic monument, the Defufa. This Defufa, the name itself is strange. It's uh, a Nubian name, meaning an elevation done by men. Here, this altar is maybe the center of ceremonies. And we think that for offering, uh, the priest killed some sheep on this stone. From the chamber, another stairway leads to the roof where ceremonies to the sun god were performed. Some 50 feet high, it commands a view of what was once a very impressive city. At its height in 1550 BC, Kerma would have been an awesome sight. A fortified wall 30 feet tall surrounded the homes and gardens of the nobility, the king's audience hall and palace, and the religious complex. Covered in white plaster with pylons over 65 feet tall, the defufa was magnificent, even by Egyptian standards. Situated on the banks of the Nile, the main trade route running north to south, the city grew rich not only on gold, but also by controlling the flow of exotic goods, ivory, ebony, incense, wild animals and slaves, from the heart of Africa to Egypt and beyond. In time, Kerma produced its own highly skilled craftsmen. I'm particularly interested with this small object of ceramics, which just looks very, very beautiful. Well, you are right, because it is something unique. A view of the door of the ancient city of Kerma about 4,000 years ago. We can see the shape of the door with the loof holes on the summit, because naturally all the city was fortified. And the strange thing is after use... Salah Ahmed, director of excavations of the Sudanese Antiquity Service, is even more impressed by the pottery. A distinctive black and red and eggshell thin, it's one of the finest ceramics produced in the ancient world. I think that the masterpiece is surely this bowl. And we found also gold, you know? We are in the country of the gold. Everybody is thinking here that we look for gold only, and I am afraid to find too many pieces of gold. I will take it here. One of the great mysteries of Kerma is how a kingdom with thousands of inhabitants could sustain itself in what looks like a barren desert. To find out, Derek Wellsby of the British Museum and his team surveyed an area of 700 square miles south of the city, which were previously unexplored. There they discovered 400 ancient sites, most dating back to the Kerma period. 
When they were plotted on a map, they fell into a line along what turned out to be two old channels of the river, which have since dried up. The banks are visible by the lines of vegetation on this side and this side, and the channel at this point about 70 metres wide is running almost due north. This uh, discovery of these two channels of the Nile, as well as the uh, channel that the present day stream flows in, gives some indication perhaps of the agricultural wealth of this area in the Kerma period. With two more channels flowing through the Nile Valley, thousands of additional acres of fertile soil would have been available to the farmers of Kerma for growing crops. Presumably this was all tied in with a, a network of supplying produce to the capital of Kerma itself, which lies some uh, 55 kilometres north from here. And in many of these settlements we have large numbers of store buildings which may have been designed for the collection of this produce and for storing it before sending it on to uh, the administrative centre in Kerma. Derek Wellsby made one more important discovery. Nature would play a cruel trick on the city of Kerma and the kingdom of Kush. Around 1500 BC, the two Nile channels began to dry up and the food supply began to diminish. Now, at the moment of crisis, a new, even more sinister threat loomed out of the north. 